Anyway, I just wanted to start out um, by talking about something. How many people here are actually paying attention to the US election? Put up your hands. OK, now, for how many of those people is this a, ma a major obsession? Well, it is for me, I, I got to admit. And um, it, 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 there's, some, uh, there's some themes there that I want to bring up that um, relate somewhat to uh, what I'm going to be talking about this morning. But I, I guess the first thing I want to say is that, at least for me, I mean, I, you know, as you can see, I'm a pretty old guy, so I can, you know, there were some big dates in, in, in the history of the U.S. that, you know, I still kind of remember where I was when they happened. You know, Kennedy assassination, 9-11, uh, and I kind of think today is going to be a day like that for, for a lot of people. Uh, but for a change, it's gonna, it has the potential to be a good news day instead of a bad news day. Um, and, and I think one of the things that it represents, um, again, coming back to the themes I'll be talking about this morning, is that certainly you know, the, 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 the likely winning campaign, the Obama campaign, and even to some extent the McCain campaign, um, represents a new kind of recognition of complexity. You know, that the world, that simple-minded solutions, simple-minded ways of thinking about how things work, they don't work. They have never worked, and uh, we've tried to apply those, uh, you know, over the past 10, 15, 20 years in the way we've governed our societies. And lo and behold, we're, we're kind of in a big mess right now. And what you're seeing from these candidates is a much more, and again, I think more so from Obama than, than McCain, a much more nuanced perspective about, about complexity and about how you know, the problems are just not that simple. And it's not gonna, we're not going to turn things around overnight. And it, that's pretty relevant to, to what I'm going to be talking about this morning. But the other thing I want to say is that um, a lot of commentators are, are talking about the fact that the way that this campaign has been run uh, has been itself a kind of a revolutionary uh, approach and a very, very reflective of our times. The use of uh, ICTs, information communications technologies, the internet as a, as a massive mobilizing force uh, for hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. You know, the o Obama campaign website was actually designed by a founder of Facebook, and it's got all kinds of social networking. You can go on there. You know, if you're an American citizen, you know, and you can, you can obviously make donations, but you can blog, you can network with other people, you can get people, you know, you can get advice on how to campaign in your neighborhood, uh, you can form little groups and go off and do things with them, and so on and so forth. So the, the power of, of collaboration and uh, enabled by, by information technologies is really at the center of a lot of what the, this campaign is about, and it's, it, it's, you know, many commentators attribute that, that power to one of the reasons why, you know, we're likely to see a, an unprecedented level of, of voting in today's election. But, the, but to me, there's another part to this, because the other thing that the commentators are saying, I was just listening to a podcast yesterday morning when I was running on the treadmill uh, of some commentators, and one guy who, this fellow, is a, is, a, is a journalist who has followed 15 or 20 campaigns during the course of his journalistic career in the United States. Federal, state, you know, city elections in places like New York City. And his comment was, had nothing to do with what I just said. His comment was, this was the most disciplined campaign that he's ever been part of. It's been run from the top. There has never been a single leak. Uh, every step of the campaign has been thought through. They, they, had a, they had an agenda of how this campaign was going to work from one month to the next. They followed it to a T, and he's never seen anything like it. So think about that. On the one hand, we've got this collaborative world, you know, and we all know what the collaborative world is like out there. You know, go to YouTube or MySpace or Facebook or whatever, and, you know, there's not a lot of discipline there. And on the other hand, there's this profound discipline which is somehow managing to get all those people who are being mobilized 
to when they, when they pick up the phone and they call someone to say, okay, you go out and vote, and the person says, well, you know, they ask them some questions, those people follow the script. So somehow, this campaign has found a way to combine incredible discipline, if you like, good old-fashioned command control with this kind of new, innovative, collaborative, spontaneous, self-organizing way of operating. And it, in a way, it encapsulates a, a very different way of thinking about how these technologies change the way that we operate and how we can operate, not only in politics, but in our, in our businesses and our daily lives and how we harness them to achieve the things we need to achieve. And again, this comes back to the point about complexity. You know, there are a lot of people out there who argue that, you know, mass collaboration changes everything. Uh, it's the way of the future. We've got to be doing it everywhere and in everything that we do in our lives, and it's going to just transform things. And you know what? Whether we like it or not, all those people out there are going to organize themselves, self-organize themselves, and change the way we do our business, whether we're, we're, whether we're in government or in corporations or what have you. Well, sorry, I, you know, I look around me at the world and I don't see that happening. It's happening in some places and in some ways, but on the whole, that's not the way things are working and it's unlikely that they're going to change uh, to the extent that some people argue, which, does, which is not to say that mass collaboration is bad, it's good. It's not to say that these collaborative tools and techniques can't be useful in the things that we do in our organizations. Yes, we can. And it's critical that we understand how to use them because they do help us be more productive, have better relationships with our clients and customers, you know, a whole host of reasons, better, better innovators, enable us to compete in more innovative ways. But there are also, the old ways of doing things are also still true. And what's interesting about the old ways of doing things, you know, the, the, the structured business models that are planned and managed with forethought, they're also changing. And they're also changing because of a lot of the same forces that are driving the rise of, of collaboration technologies and collaborative business models. And what we really need to understand as business leaders is how, what, 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 is all the, what are all those choices? How do they all fit together? When do we make the, the right choice? How do we make the right choices about which, what to do and when? How do we manage those alternatives for success? And what are the risks and how do we mitigate the risks? 